Today I'm going to be going over Pinterest advertising. So it's going to be my Pinterest ad tutorial for 2020. I'm going to show you how to create campaigns that are going to drive traffic and conversions for your website. So in order to get started, you need a Pinterest business account. So I have my Pinterest business account for farmhousegoals.com open here right now. If you don't have a business account, you're not going to have these analytics and ads tabs at the top of the screen. So you can easily create a new business account by going to business.pinterest.com. And from there you can sign up for an account. Or what you can do is if you have an existing personal account, just go over and click on settings and you're gonna have an option in the settings to actually just convert your existing personal account into a business account. So that's where you wanna get started. Once you have your business account set up, then you need to set up billing. So if you come to ads here, you go to billing. I just imported my credit card. So you just wanna make sure you have your credit card there for billing, set up your billing address. It's really that simple. It's just like adding your credit card to any of your accounts. And that credit card is gonna be charged for your advertisements. So that's where you wanna get started is a business account and billing. Once you have those two things set up, I would recommend going to conversions so you can set up conversion tracking. So if we come over to conversions here, I've already set up conversion tracking for farmhouse goals. So what you need to do is you're gonna to come to the conversion screen and you're gonna see something that looks like this. So if you haven't set up conversion tracking yet, I'm looking at my Surfside PPC Pinterest advertising account. I do have not run any Pinterest ads for Surfside PPC, so I haven't set up conversion tracking at all. So what you can do is scroll down the conversions page and you wanna install the tag. So if you click on install the tag, I would highly recommend just using the partner integration. So if you click on choose here, it's gonna give you some different partners that Pinterest will easily allow you to install your tag with. So Google Tag Manager, Shopify, WooCommerce, WordPress, maybe you're running a Weebly website or Squarespace. So these are all different partners and if you click through them, they're gonna easily help you install your tag. Now, if you wanna do it manually, what you can do is click on install the tag and manually add the tag code to your website. So with that, what you wanna do is click on choose and you wanna first start by installing the base code. So if you install the base code, it's gonna look like this. So you're gonna take this tag, you could copy the code, and you're gonna put it directly in between your opening and closing head tags. So that's where you wanna get started is adding this base code to your header tag. And then what you wanna do is install the event code. So here with the event code, you can track checkouts, add to cart, page visits, signups, watch video, lead, search, view category. So these are all the different ones that you can track and you can also set up custom events as well. Now, for example, what I can do with Surfside PPC is let's just say I wanna track a thank you page. So what I can do is keep track of conversions. I'm gonna install the tag. Let's say I wanna use a partner integration. So we're gonna choose here. I can just use this directly with Google Tag Manager. So I'll click on Google Tag Manager here. So it's gonna say open Google Tag Manager. So I click on open, it's gonna open up Tag Manager so now I can sign into my account. Okay, so I signed into my Google Tag Manager account for Surfside PPC. So now all I need to do is click on continue and it's gonna say install the base code. So go to Google Tag Manager, click to add a new tag, click on continue. You're gonna see there's six steps at the bottom here. So it's gonna be new tag. And one of the options here under tag configuration is gonna be Pinterest. So just come up here in the top and just search Pinterest. You're gonna see Pinterest tag right here. You wanna name your tags so you can know which tags they are. So we'll do Pinterest. So now we wanna click on tag configuration here. It's gonna say enter our tag ID. So coming back over here to the instructions, you can see tag configuration, click on continue, search for the Pinterest tag, just like I did, click on continue, enter your unique tag ID. So this is my tag ID right here. So what I'm gonna do is copy it and we're gonna paste it right in this tag ID portion. So right here in tag ID, we're gonna paste it. And then what we wanna do is click here and click on continue. And then we wanna click on trigger and select the trigger where that tag will fire. So we wanna come over here and we wanna scroll down. Right now it's gonna say event to fire is gonna be base code only. I can also use this for lead, but for right now it's gonna be base code only. So you wanna install your base code first. So we wanna come down to trigger and I wanna install this tag on every single page on my website. So I'm gonna choose a trigger for every single page on my website, I want the Pinterest tag to fire. So that means it's gonna track every single person that visits my website. This is gonna help me also build remarketing audiences through Pinterest, so I can also target people who have visited my website who also use Pinterest as well. So it's really that simple to set it up. You can set up enhanced match tracking as well. That's gonna be a little bit more advanced. So with that, you can actually get people's email addresses as they give you information, and you can send that email address back to Pinterest so that you're able to target people based on email addresses as well. 
So right now we have our Pinterest tag set up here. We're firing it on all of our pages so we can click on save. Okay, so you can see we have our Pinterest tag added. So now the next thing I need to do is add a new tag again. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna do Pinterest lead. Okay, so now we're gonna track Pinterest leads on our website. So we're gonna click on tag configuration again. And again, we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna search Pinterest here and we're gonna take our Pinterest tag we're gonna paste our tag ID here in this portion right here and the event that we wanna fire. So what we wanna do is we wanna fire an event and I'm just gonna say I'm gonna fire lead and you can see here they have lead type. So you can enter a lead type here if you want it separated by different types of leads that you're driving. Maybe you have a lead for your newsletter, maybe you have a lead for a free trial. So you can set up a lead type. This is optional here, you don't have to do this. I'm trying to fire a lead here and then what I can do under triggering is I can do the confirmation page. So anytime someone reaches my page URL that contains confirm, so this would be surfsidepcc.com slash confirm. So that's the page that people get sent to so they confirm their email address after they sign up for my newsletter. So let's just say the confirmation page. So now the Pinterest tag is gonna fire a lead event every single time that someone reaches this confirmation page. So we're gonna click on save. And you can see now we have two of these tags added. So all we need to do is publish. So we're gonna click on submit and we're gonna publish this version so we can add a name here. Okay, so we added our Pinterest base code and lead event code. We have Pinterest conversion tracking here so I can click on publish. And now this should track conversions on Pinterest for us as we set up our campaigns. And every time someone reaches that confirm page, we can actually tie it back to our Pinterest advertising campaigns. So I would highly recommend getting started with Pinterest conversion tracking first. It's a pretty easy process. You're gonna see here they have the step-by-step -step process for setting it up. So you can see here I had trigger for all pages. That was setting up the base code. So there's a base code and there's the event code. So with the base code, that's the code you wanna fire on every single page. That's gonna track every single thing that someone does on your website. The event code is used to track specific events like someone purchasing something from your website, someone adding a product to the cart, or in this case, someone filling out a form on my website, going to a page and being counted as a lead. So now we can click on continue. It's gonna tell me to do submit and publish. So you wanna publish your changes, click on continue, and now we can see if it was installed correctly. Okay, we'll click on verify. Okay, so the installation was successful. It says we can, it, we recommend you add events like add to cart and checkout so you can track conversions and much more. I can tell you e-commerce websites should all be tracking all of those events. I don't have an e-commerce website, so I'm not tracking any of those events for right now. So that's how to set up your Pinterest tag. I would highly recommend using one of the partners. So if you're running a Shopify website, just go through the process for the partners with Shopify. That's gonna allow you to easily set up events like a checkout or like an add to cart. So you can actually optimize for those events for your campaign. So now what I'm gonna do is go back to my Farmhouse Goals account. You can see I have my Farmhouse Goals tag one here. So I created my tag, I added the base code to every single page on my website. And if you come over here to event history and see history, my type here is a lead. So this lead tracks outbound clicks on my website. So over the last 24 hours, this is showing I've had 203 outbound clicks. That's actually not the exact number compared to the data that I have in Google Analytics, but it's close enough to the number so I know that I can use this as a conversion on my website. So that's gonna allow me to create conversion campaigns. So if you go to Pinterest, you set up your conversion tracking. At this point, you should have a business account, you should have your billing set up, you should have your conversion tracking set up. So what we can do now is create an ad. What you might wanna do first though is come to audiences here and under audiences, you can see I have some remarketing audiences here. I have act-alike audiences. So this is an act-alike, people who are similar to my website visitors 30 day audience. So if you're familiar with similar audiences in Google ads or lookalike audiences in Facebook ads, it's the same exact concept. Pinterest ads is taking my existing audiences and finding people with similar interests and behaviors. You can also see an engagement audience. So if you come over here to create, you can see some of the different options you have. Visitors who went to your site, a list of customers that you upload, an engagement audience that's engaged with pins from your confirmed domain, and an act-alike audience that behaves similarly to one you already have. So you have all those different options to create audiences. It's very simple. Click on visitors here, click on next. Since we have the tag on our website, I can say I want to reach everybody with this farmhouse goals tag add a filter and I can say the event equals and I can do specific URLs that people have been to. 
I can say anybody who has completed my lead event, I can target them with my advertisements or exclude them from my campaigns. But what I can do right here is say URL contains, and I can say any URL that contains syncs. And then I can target people who have visited syncs pages on my website. So I could say anyone who has been here for syncs in the past 60 days. So I can just name my audience. We'll say farmhouse syncs 60 days. We'll just skip the description for now. We're using our farmhouse goals tag, including past traffic in the past 60 days. Anybody who's been to a URL that contains syncs at anywhere in the URL, they are going to be added to this audience. I can click on create and now I can start targeting people in this audience it's still building at this time. Once it's ready, I can start targeting it within my campaign. So you probably want to create audiences because you should always use some form of remarketing with your advertising, especially if your main focus is on conversions. But what I'm going to show you is how to build a Pinterest advertising campaign, and I'm going to be focused on traffic first and then conversions. So one of the issues you might run into if you're first starting with Pinterest advertising, if we come over here to create ad, so it's going to say, what's your campaign objective? So right now it's saying you're ready to start running conversion campaigns. So you might ha not have the option to run conversion campaigns because what you need to do is first run a traffic campaign and actually drive conversions for your business. So if I come back over to Surfside PPC and let's just say I come to ads and I go to create ad. So the automatic thing it's going to give me for what's my business goal is traffic. So you can see some of the different options you have for business goals, brand awareness, video views, app install, traffic, conversion, and catalog sales. So the ideal thing is to be over here with conversions for driving conversions to your website or driving catalog sales using your product inventory. So I'm trying to go over some of this stuff in the future, going over e-commerce, catalog sales for Pinterest, Google ads, all these different platforms. But for right now, what I want to do is focus on driving traffic and driving conversions directly to my website, not focus on e-commerce specifically. So for Surfside PPC, if I click on conversions, it's going to say install the Pinterest tag. It looks like you don't have the Pinterest tag installed yet. So it's probably still verifying my Pinterest tag, even though it showed that it was properly installed earlier. So once you do have it installed, it's not going to allow me to drive conversion campaigns until you actually drive some conversions from a traffic campaign. So what I would recommend doing is if you can run conversion campaigns, then click on conversions here. So what I can do is just try it and it's going to come over here to conversions, drive actions on your website. If you can't run conversion campaigns, then what you want to do is just start with traffic campaign. And once you start running conversions, then switch to a conversion campaign. So that's what I'm going to do now. So we're going to come down here to campaign details. So we'll name our campaign. So I'll do farmhouse goals, conversions, campaign, daily spend limit. So how much I want my campaign to spend per day. So you can do anywhere from $1, $100. So it really depends on what type of budget you want to spend. I would say keep it low as you begin. Usually I'll keep my daily spend limit very low when I start a new campaign and then I'll expand it as I go because my goal is ultimately to drive as many clicks as possible at the lowest cost because that's the best thing for my business in particular. So let's just say my daily spend limit for right now is $5 per day. So that means over the course of a month, I'm probably going to spend around $150. Now, lifetime spend limit, this is good just to make sure you don't overspend. So let's say I don't want to spend over $150 for this campaign. You can always increase your lifetime spend limit and your daily spend limit. So don't worry too much about setting these in stone. But right now, I'll just do $150. Campaign status, you can start it as active or paused. I'll keep it as active and we'll click on continue. Okay, so now similar to a Google Ads campaign, what you do with a Pinterest advertising campaign is you set up different ad groups. So we're going to start with our different ad groups. And for me personally, what I'm going to be doing is driving traffic to this page right here, Farmhouse Comforters. I'm going to be driving traffic to this page, Farmhouse Bedding. And I'm going to be driving traffic to this page, Farmhouse Coffee Tables. So that's what I'm going to use for this example. So I'm going to have pins specifically for each of these different categories and then drive people to these pages. And what I'm going to be targeting are keywords. So first, we're going to name our first ad group. And what I'll do is Farmhouse Comforters. Okay, so you could target an audience here. So I could target a remarketing audience. So website visitors 500 days. You're going to see I have my farmhouse sinks audience down here. This should get larger as it goes. It's just still building that audience. I can also come over here and target this act alike audience. So that's another one I can include. You can also exclude audiences. So if you have a group of people that have already converted, you can exclude audiences here. So I'm not going to be targeting audiences in this ad group. So I'm not going to have anything listed here. I'm going to be really focused on keywords. The next option is interests. So if you look at interests, they have a ton of different interest options here. 
So even if you just come up here to the search bar and I just search farmhouse, you're going to see home decor, home decor style, farmhouse decor. So I would target this interest with my advertisements. If I was focused on interest, you're going to see my potential audience is 6.16 million to 6.56 million monthly active users. And it's about right in the middle of narrow and broad. So this would be good if I'm running a promotion, I want to reach a wide audience. That's one option that I have is to target an interest. I would say I really focus more on keywords. It's probably because my main background is in Google ads. So when I create a campaign, if I can target what people are typing in, that's really what I want to focus on. But if I was trying to target people for a farmhouse wedding ideas, or I'm trying to sell something related to farmhouse weddings, then I can click on this. I'm reading a potential audience, reaching a potential audience of 292 to 312 K. So I would say that's a pretty good audience size, and it would be great for me to target people with wedding specific advertisements and wedding specific landing pages. But for now, I'm not going to be targeting any interests here. So right now it's showing my potential audience size is 60 million plus monthly active users, very broad. So now we keep coming down. The next thing is keywords. It's saying for best results, use a minimum of 25 keywords. You don't necessarily need to do that. But what we can do is come down here to the bottom and see they have match types in Pinterest ads the same exact way they have match types for Google ads. So some of the different keywords, broad match, phrase match, and exact match. You can also add negative keywords by just putting a minus sign in front of the same exact type of keyword. So a phrase match keyword would look like this. So when you're entering it here and you're targeting it, that's a phrase match keyword. That means anytime someone types in a phrase, so this is a phrase match because this phrase shows right here. And then a different example would be this phrase does not match because this is not a phrase match right here does not appears in the middle. So that's the way phrase match keywords work. I tend to use phrase match keywords on Pinterest. Now, if you want to add a negative keyword, what you would do is just negative and then the same exact thing. So phrase match here. So anytime you put a minus sign in front of the keyword, that's going to be a negative keyword. So what I'm going to do is search keywords here. So since I'm targeting for farmhouse comforters, we're just going to enter that exact keyword in here. We'll see what they come up with. So we just have farmhouse comforter here. So we're going to enter that here. So what I'll do is farmhouse comforter. I'll do farmhouse comforter sets, farmhouse themed comforter, farmhouse style comforter, and we'll do farm comforter. And then what I can also do is something like rustic comforters. So if I want to expand a little bit, I can do rustic comforters. I'm not going to do that for now. I always think I keep it as narrow as possible when I'm creating a campaign. You can always expand later. So these are going to be the keywords I'm going to target. I'm going to put quotes around all of them. So they're phrase match keywords. So I'm going to do that now. Okay. So this is good to get started for this individual ad group. I have all these different keywords that I'm targeting phrase match keywords. So now what we're going to do is continue to scroll down. You're going to see my potential audience size right now is less than 10,000. So for me, that's perfect because I can always add more pages and more ad groups for all the different types of pages I have on my website. So whether it's farmhouse area rugs, farmhouse lighting, I can always expand this campaign. So the amount of keywords you target really depends on if you want your campaign to be narrow or a little bit more broad. This, I like my, my campaigns to be as narrow as possible. So we're going to keep scrolling down here and this is where you can narrow down your campaign a little bit. So you can see genders, all genders, ages, all ages. So what I can do is pick specific genders and I can just choose female since that's the majority of my audience. I'm just going to keep it open to all genders ages. I'm just going to keep it open to all ages. The one thing I'll do is do 21 plus. So I just want to make sure that I'm reaching an adult audience. I could just do 18 and up, but I'll just do 21 plus. So I'm think anybody who's looking for farmhouse comforters is going to be at least 18 and up. So what I'm going to do is we'll just keep it like this locations right now. It's all us locations. I can do pick specific locations so you can find all these different locations here. Just make sure you're targeting where your customers are located. I'll just do all United States locations languages. You want to select the languages that your customers speak. So we'll pick specific languages and I'm going to get rid of select all here and just do English for this. Keep scrolling down. You can do devices so you can do all or pick specific devices. Pretty self-explanatory. I usually just leave this wide open. Now ad group placement, you have all which is recommended. You have browse and you have search. So I'm going to go over some examples right now. So with browse as an ad group placement, if we come over here, you can see I'm just at pinterest.com slash home feed. So this means my ads are going to show up right in the home feed when people are browsing. Now, since I'm doing keyword targeting, 
I generally assume that for the most part, my ads are gonna show up in the search portion, but I still just keep this as all because maybe if people do type in these keywords and go to browse later, it'll still target them with my advertisements. So we'll come over here, we'll find a promoted pin. So here's a promoted pin right here by Signature Hardware. So it's a vanity, so you can see it's pretty relevant for me. Here's another promoted pin by Squarespace. So trying to get me to create a Squarespace website. Some different examples of pins in the browse feed. Now the other option is search. So if I come over here and I just search farmhouse coffee table. So that's the search I type in and we come down, you're gonna see this is an advertisement. The one that I found is if we come down, so wayfair.com, a coffee table that I would say has a farmhouse theme. So this is a good advertisement right here. If I click on it and open it, it's probably gonna bring me right to this product page. So if I like this coffee table, I'm likely to click this advertisement. So that's how the ad group placement works. So I just keep this as all. Now ad group tracking URLs, you can add a tracking URL to the end of your pin. Generally what I do is when I'm creating my pins, and I'll show you this later on in the process, when I'm creating my pins, I just use the tracking URL directly in the pin that I upload. Because even if I have a promoted pin and it leads to additional organic clicks, I just wanna count that all as part of my campaign. So that's kind of just a personal preference. You can add tracking here and track for clicks, for impressions. So some different options you have with tracking URLs. I'll go over tracking URLs in a little bit as I'm uploading my Pinterest pins. So for this, I'm not gonna add any ad group tracking URLs. If you wanna learn more, you can click on the question mark so you can add third-party click tracking. It allows you to track your campaigns into different analytics software. So we'll scroll down, use your pin to expand your targeting. So essentially they're gonna take your pin descriptions and expand your targeting to reach new people. I'm not gonna check this box, so I really just wanna focus on people who are typing in my keywords. Now, daily budgets and schedules. So, daily budget. So this is the daily budget for this individual ad group. So for this individual ad group, let's just say, I don't wanna spend more than $2 per day. So I'm gonna create three total ad groups. I don't wanna spend more than $2 per day for any of the ad groups, and my campaign daily budget is $5. So again, you can multiply all these numbers. If my campaign daily budget was $50, I can set my daily budget at $20 here. I'm really just showing you how to create a small campaign. You can always increase these budgets later. So daily budget, what I'm gonna do is just $2 per day for this individual ad group. You can set ad group dates if you want, so you can set start and end dates. I'm not gonna do that here. Optimization and delivery. So my conversion event is gonna be using my Pinterest tag and I'm gonna be going for leads. So that's the main conversion event for me. Again, that's outbound clicks that happen on my website. Target average cost per action. So essentially, how much do I wanna pay for each individual lead on my website? Okay, so next is gonna be target average cost per action. So I wanna set this as low as possible. The average cost per action I would like to pay is under $1. So let's just say I have a $2 daily budget in this ad group, which is very low. So the average cost per action I wanna spend is 50 cents. So that's how much I wanna pay for each individual lead. So I wanna get my cost per action as low as possible and try to drive as many conversions as possible. So with a $5 daily budget, that would mean I drive 10 conversions per day. Pacing, standard versus accelerated, I usually just leave this as standard. So we're gonna scroll down, conversion window, so 30, 30, 30. That means 30 days after people click on my ad, 30 days after they engage with my ad, 30 days after they view my ad. Any of those are gonna count as conversions. So now we need to select our advertisements. So the ad, the pins that I usually use for advertisements look something like this. So you can see 100 plus farmhouse betting sets. I create my pins using canva.com. So if you're familiar with canva.com, it's a free way to upload your own images. You can put some text around it. It's a really easy way to make graphics. I use the premium version. It's about $12 a month. I'll go through that in a little bit. So what I'm gonna do is come over here to boards and I'm gonna just find the farmhouse comforters board. Okay, so I have farmhouse comforters here. So this is the board that I'm gonna select and I'm gonna wanna promote some of these different pins that I've uploaded recently. So if I click on the edit button here, I just wanna make sure I have tracking at the end of my URL. So now this is the first time I'm gonna go over tracking. So I uploaded this pin already. I'm gonna go through the process of uploading a pin in a little bit, but what I have is a tracking URL. So if we come over here, what I wanna show you is the campaign URL builder that is used for Google Analytics. So this is how you track individual URLs for campaigns if you're building a Pinterest advertising campaign or really any advertising campaign outside of Google Ads. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna scroll down here. What you do is you enter a website URL, where you wanna send traffic to, a campaign source, campaign medium. So for me, it's Pinterest and CPC. So this is who's referring it and what type of marketing medium it is. So CPC, cost per click. 
campaign name, so Farmhouse Goals Pinterest campaign. So for this one, I'm going to do Farmhouse Goals Conversions campaign. Okay, so we're going to create a new campaign here. So new campaign tracking, the campaign term, so what I'm targeting. I'm just going to do keywords here. So I'm going to do keywords across this entire campaign. So the only reason that I really use the campaign term is to use keywords, interests, or I'll do something like remarketing. So depending on what I'm targeting, that's what I'll use the campaign term for. So for this, we're just going to set it as keywords. Campaign content, I'm going to do comforters. So now I need to update my website URL. So we're going to come back over here, click on farmhouse comforters here. So we're going to take this URL, come back over to the campaign URL builder and enter this as our website URL. Now at the bottom, you're going to see we have our tracking URL here. So we're sending people to our farmhouse comforters page. Source is Pinterest. Medium is cost per click campaign. So you're going to see it doesn't look great, but if we copy this URL, what we can do is come back over to campaign creation and we can enter that as our website URL here for this pin. So I just prefer to make the entire pin with the tracking URL because then any click that happens on this pin, I can just track back to that campaign. Even if it's an organic click, I don't have a problem with Pinterest ads lumping in my organic information with my paid advertising campaigns. So that's going to be my website here and we can just click on save. Okay, so that now we have this pin set up. So we'll choose a couple of these pins here. We'll just make sure we set our tracking URL, click on save, choose this pin over here, set our tracking URL, click on save. So now we have these ones selected. So we'll just select a couple more here. There's really no downside to uploading multiple pins and testing pins against each other. The more pins you have, the better your campaign is going to perform because the top performing pins are going to continue to show more and more over time. So you want to make sure you're creating pins. I use some different fonts. Sometimes I'll use different images here. Some of them have background color. Some of them are just white backgrounds. So just really test all these different factors. The one thing I like to do is make sure I have my logo in my Pinterest pin because I just think it helps build brand recognition. So we'll come over here. We'll do one more and we'll copy and paste our website URL here. Click on save. Okay. So we'll select this one. And now once we click on launch, it's going to launch our campaign. So it's really that simple to create. Pinterest advertising campaigns, we have our conversion campaign here. So one thing I want to show you is right now it's just showing my conversions campaign. So if we come over here to objectives, let's select all. So this is going to bring up all the campaigns I've ever ran. And one of the active campaigns I have right here is a traffic campaign. This is going to be very similar to the conversions campaign, but I want to go through this traffic campaign a little bit. So what we can do is under status here, if you go over campaign status and just click on only next to active, it'll just show the campaigns that are active. So I have my traffic campaign, my conversions campaign. If I click on my traffic campaign, you're going to see I have three total ad groups in here. I'll go over building an ad group in the conversions campaign. But for right now, what I want to show you is you can see the result for some of these different ad groups. Now I set up this campaign first with the farmhouse coffee tables ad groups. That's why it's getting the majority of spend majority of clicks. We'll also come up here just looking at the last seven days. We'll look at the last 14 days. Okay. So this will give us a little bit more data. I launched this campaign on May 4th. You can see I'm not spending a ton for this campaign, but if we come over, you can see 111 clicks for coffee tables. I'm paying about 10 cents per click almost 10,000 impressions. And if we keep coming over, you can see my bid is just 11 cents here. So for traffic campaigns, you're going to have to set your bids manually. So I have 11 cent and 10 cent bids. So since my budget's so low, I just want to bid as low as possible. Now, if we come over to table here, one thing we can do is look at custom tables. And if we click on the custom table and we scroll down here, we can actually look at conversions and see how many conversions are being driven by this campaign. Okay, so we'll save changes at the bottom. You can see there's a ton of different options here. So we'll save changes, go back to reporting. So when you come into ads and you go to reporting, that's how you see this screen right here. So we come down and we're gonna click again in our traffic campaign. I don't love Pinterest advertising reporting. It always seems like you have to keep adjusting things even after you make some of these changes. So if we scroll over here and we look for conversions, Okay, so you can see here, this individual ad group has driven three conversions on my website. So you can see it is performing well. Once you start driving some of these conversions, you just want to create conversions campaigns because then your campaign is going to be optimized for conversions rather than just clicks at the lowest cost. So that's why I created my farmhouse goals conversions campaign. So we'll come back over here to the campaign level. We click on this little X here to get rid of the campaign we were in and we'll come back to our conversions campaign. 
So now the next thing you want to do is create a new ad group. So I have my existing ad group with farmhouse comforters. I'm targeting farmhouse comforter keywords. I'm sending traffic to this page and I'm tracking my campaign into Google Analytics using the Google URL builder. So to show you what it looks like when I'm tracking my campaign into Google Analytics, what I'm going to do is I'm going to come over here to Google Analytics and you can see I'm in my analytics account for farmhouse goals. And if you go to acquisition campaigns and all campaigns, you can see right here. So my farmhouse goals, Pinterest campaign, that's the campaign that I was just showing you where the majority of traffic is coming in through the coffee tables ad group. This one is showing I've driven six total conversions. So slightly higher, it's showing less clicks overall. So it's only showing 76 total sessions. The other one was showing over a hundred clicks. So if you see some data discrepancies with Pinterest, I wouldn't be too alarmed. Usually Pinterest over reports clicks in my experience, but you could see bounce rate almost 80%. It's a little bit high pages per session, 1.43 average session duration, 43 seconds. So you can compare this data to my farmhouse goals conversions search campaign. So this is a Google ads campaign right here driven a lot more users, but overall the conversion rate is pretty solid for Pinterest. So it's really not performing too bad. Now, if we click on the farmhouse goals, Pinterest campaign, it's going to bring up the source and the medium. So Pinterest and CPC coming back over to the campaign URL builder source, Pinterest, medium CPC. You can see the campaign name was farmhouse goals. The other one was Pinterest campaign. So our new one is going to come in as a brand new campaign, farmhouse goals, conversions campaign. Now term and content. So in order to find both of those, what you want to do is click on the secondary dimension. And for term, you want to type in keyword. So keyword represents term. So if we click on keyword under the advertising here, it's going to show keywords. Okay. So keywords. So that's what we're targeting. So our term is keywords. So I know I'm targeting keywords. And then the other thing we can do to look at the individual ad groups is content. So we're going to come over here and just type in content and it's going to be under advertising ad content. So we're going to click on ad content. And now you can see under ad content. So I didn't set it for coffee tables, but I did set it for comforter and bedding. So for this one, you're going to see I have comforter set so I can know what my ad content is. So hopefully that makes sense with tracking. Essentially what you want to do is build URLs using the Google campaign URL builder. And I'll put this link in the video description. You can also just search campaign URL builder, Google analytics directly into Google. And this is going to be the top result. So all you need to do when you're sending traffic to a different page is update the URL and you need to update the content. So for example, as I move on to my next ad group, so we'll come back over here and what I'll do is I'll do one for coffee tables. So we'll take this URL, come back over to the campaign URL builder first, update the URL and then campaign content. What I'll do is coffee and I could just do tables. So I'll do a hyphen in between the words. So this will be my new URL for this campaign. So I can copy that URL. And what we're going to do is we're going to come back over to Pinterest. And we have our conversions campaign here. So our farmhouse goals conversions campaign being cut off a little bit here, but we have our comforters ad group. So we'll create a new ad group. So our ad group is going to run completely independent to the other ad group, but it's still going to be part of our overall campaign. So you have your campaign budget, which I set at just $5 a day, and then you have your ad group budget. So it's really easy to kind of manage different ad groups and how much you're spending in each individual ad group. So for this one, what I'll do is farmhouse coffee tables. I'm going to do the same thing down here. We're going to skip interests and audiences, and we're just going to come right down to keywords so I can search for keywords here. And what I'll do this time is farmhouse coffee tables. We'll click on enter, see some of their suggestions. So they have a few different options here, but for mine, I'm just going to enter the keywords here manually. So I'll enter my targeted keywords. Okay. So for this, I'm just going to choose these three different keywords. So again, I'm using phrase match keywords here. Keep scrolling down. I'm not going to narrow down by genders. We'll do the same thing. 21 plus for ages, all us locations. I'll do the English language again. So we'll just select English here. Keep scrolling down. I'm not going to adjust devices. Ad group placement will be all I'm not going to set up ad group tracking URLs. I'm just going to add that to the individual pins. Use my pin to expand my targeting. No daily budget. So I'll do $2 here. Okay, so I have my daily budget as $2, keep scrolling down. So it's using my tag, conversion event is a lead. My target average cost per action, we're gonna set as 50 cents again. So now we can keep scrolling down, set as standard, ad group status will be active, and we'll come over to boards and look for farmhouse coffee tables. Okay, we have farmhouse coffee tables here will open, and now what I wanna do is find some pins that I can promote. 
Okay, so I could try some of these pins here as well. So there's really no downside. So what I can do is take this pin, we'll update the URL. So we're just gonna send people to this page, set our tracking here. So you can see our UTM content is coffee tables. And if we come over to our URL, farmhousegoals.com slash best farmhouse coffee tables. Okay, so it's gonna be the same exact campaign. We just updated the URL and we updated the UTM content portion. So we could actually track each individual ad group separately. So we'll click on save and then we'll select this individual pin. So we'll do it for a couple more pins here. So we'll take this one, update the URL, click on save, and we'll use this pin here. So again, same thing, take this pin here, copy and paste, save and select it. So we'll do this one and then we'll be good to go to launch this campaign. So we'll paste, save, select, and launch. So we have four total ads here, a new ad group. So you can see if we click on our conversions campaign, we have our comforters ad group, we have our coffee tables ad group. So once we start getting some data in here in terms of spend and actions, the more ad groups we create, the more ads we run, the better our campaign is gonna perform. So that's pretty much creating a Pinterest advertising campaign. Now what I'm gonna do is run this campaign, but I'm gonna create a lot more ad groups with all the different pages on my website. So I have a lot of different product style pages on my website. So I can send people to different landing pages, I can target different keywords, and we can see what's gonna end up performing the best for this campaign. So what I wanna do next is we wanna come directly over to Pinterest and I wanna show you what I do when I'm creating a new pin that I wanna to add to a, an existing campaign or for a new campaign. So all you need to do when you're uploading a pin is just click on create pin here and you can save it directly from your website or you can upload an image here or a video. So I'm using image specific advertisements for my Pinterest campaign. So what I'm gonna do is upload an image here. Now the way I create my images, I went over this before, is I use Canva. So with Canva, what I have are pins that look like this. So you can see farmhouse bedding sets. So let's just say I wanna use this individual pin right here, farmhouse bedding sets, but I'll just change this to farmhouse comforters. So we'll come over, farmhouse comforters. So all I'm gonna do is download this page. So page two, it's this specific Pinterest pin. Now, if you wanna just use a template on Canva, you can select the Pinterest template. And if we just click here and resize, the size for a Pinterest template is 1000 by 1500 pixels. And then they have all these different templates here. So you can just, if you're you creating a food Pinterest pin, you can click on this right here and then just edit anything you want to. So come here and edit the color. So you can change the background color. You can change the font. So maybe you wanna change the font and increase the size. So you have all these different options. You can change the background image. You can change this text down here. So you have all these different options and they have all these built-in templates here. So I can click on this one right here. Maybe I wanna change this for a boy. So I can click on it and change the color to blue and change the colors around here and then download this Pinterest pin and use it that easily for one of my promoted pins. So canva.com, if you're not familiar with it, I would recommend just using a free account. They have a lot of features with a free account. You can download these Pinterest pins, use these templates. So what I'm gonna do is download this page two right here. So we're gonna click, come here and click on download. Also just publish directly to Pinterest, but usually I download it to my computer. Okay, so I downloaded my pin. I came over here and I uploaded it. Now some different options. You can create carousel pins. So all you need to do is right here, create a carousel, and then you just upload a different image here. So let's just say I wanna upload a different image. Okay, so I can upload a different image right here. And what I can do is take this URL, so you can see I have the product page right here. The same image is right here. So I can take this URL, just copy it, come right over to my campaign URL builder, upload this one right here. So we'll paste this new URL, we'll copy the URL, and then we're gonna use that. So as we come over to our Pinterest destination link, we'll enter that one first. So come over to our other pin, and what we can do is uncheck this, it's gonna say use the same text and URL for each image. So now what I can actually do is send people to different pages. Gotta make sure I update coffee tables here as well. So we'll come back over and we have comforters. Okay, so we have this URL updated for this page. And now what I can do is create the other one for farmhouse comforters, come back over. So I'm making sure that I'm sending people to the right landing pages. I have the right UTM campaign content here. So we'll copy this URL. And for our main image here, so we'll come over to our main image and we'll change the URL here. So now we have the right final URLs for both of these pins. We have a carousel pin. You can also tag individual products on your pins. So there's a lot of different things that you can do as you're creating your Pinterest pins. But for this, I'm just gonna keep it like this. You can create a carousel. We'll add our title. Okay, so we have our main image here, 100 plus farmhouse comforters. I have my ad copy here. So usually I just try to include some different keywords, but I do it naturally. Discover the best farmhouse comforters and farm style comforter sets for your rustic home. 
improve your farmhouse bedding decor, it all starts with the right farmhouse bedding set, farmhouse style comforters. So I have some different keywords in there that people tend to type into Pinterest. And then for my second one, I did the actual product. So Harbor House Ansley three-piece cotton yard dyed comforter set. And then I have a little bit more information down here and the perfect farmhouse comforter for your home. So now all I need to do is select my board. So we'll come down here to farmhouse comforters. Okay, so we'll publish it right here. Okay, so we saved it to farmhouse comforters. We can click on see it now. When you come in here to see it now, you can actually just promote your pin directly from a lot of pages on Pinterest. But what I'm gonna do is we're gonna come back over to our ads portion. And if you click on overview here, it's gonna give you a basic overview of your ad performance. So you can see my spend 1350, total impressions, about 11,000 here, 123 link clicks, 12 saves. So I'd like to get more saves and I'd like to actually drive more conversions as well. But when you wanna adjust your campaign, you wanna to come to ads and reporting. You can also use the bulk editor in Pinterest, but I'm not gonna go through that at this time. So we're gonna take our conversions campaign and we're gonna to go to our existing farmhouse comforters ad group and what we're gonna do is create an ad. So it's gonna fast forward through everything and now we have the pin that we just uploaded here. So when you create a brand new pin, it's usually gonna be the first one that shows up. So we can just select this pin, save on edits, and now we've added this new individual advertisement to our campaign. So it's that simple to upload Pinterest ads. And what I generally do is I'll upload a bunch of Pinterest images at once when I'm creating a new ad group, and then I'll just select them like I showed you as I'm building the campaign. So now all we need to do is come to ads and reporting, and we can look at our existing campaigns, just come to status, we'll look at active. So if we come down, you can see we have our conversions campaign here. So I pause my other campaign. So now we're just running this campaign and we can see how this is gonna perform. I have my budget set very low, but I can always come over here and increase my budget over time and increase my individual ad group budgets. I do wanna create more ad groups for this campaign, but we'll see how this performs and I'll do a follow-up video about optimizations and creating even better campaigns with more ad groups.